Hello, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for coming to this very special presentation, the Meet the Future presentation. We are very happy to have here with us five talents from Czech Republic. This is a partnership with the Czech Film Fund. We have here with us Vigislav Hovanec, who will come up to say a few words. <laughs> Uh, and, um, and it's a partnership between the Czech Film Fund and Istok Platform. And uh, we are very honored and happy that Nadia Tenstedt from Doc Leipzig and Zeynep Güzel from <laughs> Berlin Nale Talents, Doc Station, came to help us out to prepare uh, this presentation. Uh, so, Vikislav, if you can uh, come and join me. Hello everyone, I'm Vyacheslav from Czech Film Fund. Um, we uh, support uh, Czech uh, films, uh, including uh, minority co-productions. So uh, basically we can help also your projects if you uh, <laughs> would like to co-produce with Czech Republic. And in that case, if you want to know more information, uh, you can always come to me and talk to me. Uh, I have to say I'm very happy that we can uh, be part of this uh, program in the future because we fell in love with the format. And I think it's uh, even healthy in this um, uh, film industry, which is uh, very much uh, project oriented to focus on the filmmakers themselves and to find uh, who are the people behind the projects, uh, uh, what is their artistic vision, thoughts, maybe fears. Uh, so I believe it will be more human than a typical pitching format. And um, I would also like to encourage you and uh, ask you to um, maybe talk to the filmmakers after uh, this event because there is a, a happy hour just after so you can talk to them, maybe you will find new friends, maybe future colleagues, who knows. And uh, each of you who will do that uh, will have a free drink at the happy hour, I promise. <laughs> free drinks for everyone. <laughs> So, yeah, uh, I will uh, give uh, the word to Veronika Dvořáčková from uh, Institute of Documentary Film, which is another partner of this event, and she will uh, moderate uh, this uh, panel, and uh, she will introduce the uh, filmmakers and will provide you with all this. Uh, congratulations for choosing this program, because I think it's great, and uh, you will not regret that you came. <laughs> Enjoy it. Hello, I'm Veronika, as uh, Vyacheslav and Angliki said already, uh, and I'm here on behalf of Institute of Documentary Film in Prague. We are focusing on Central and Eastern European documentaries, and we are running a uh, couple of uh, programs. One is called East uh, Silver Market, which is my baby. That's why um, I said it as a first, but we have a really lovely training program, Ex Oriente, you may know, I guess. And then we have EastDoc platform, which will be uh, ongoing within two weeks. So do not hesitate to check the websites because there is many uh, lovely pro projects. And uh, we also have Kinedoc uh, audience uh, uh, program, uh, program focus on audience and screening outside of the cinema. So uh, also we can give you contacts and we can consult with you. So just contact, contact, contact us and we will be happy to help you. And I hope this was the worst thing you can you could hear today because their presentation will be much better. <laughs> I promised <laughs> a little bit. Be like that? No, I'm really like that. And I wanted to introduce as a first person. Go on, <laughs> Victor. Hmm. Yeah. Thank, thank you very much, and thank you for inviting to the Meet the Future program. Uh, when uh, thinking about it myself, I realized that. Uh, a memory is something what connects all of my life, all of my projects, because when I'm not working on my film projects, I work in a Czech NGO which collects uh, memories of people who struggled and suffered during communist and Nazi era. In uh, past 10 years, I directed three uh, documentary series for Czech television. Uh, about the stories of these people, but, and it will maybe sound a little bit strange, but I don't uh, like doing historical films. <laughs> and when I'm asking why, 
so I get to the fact that uh, I never wanted to uh, focus on facts, telling the history, but I was always amazed by listening the real people stories and I had always like a deep personal need to ask questions and to try to understand different stories, different um, circumstances that uh, happen in uh, people's lives and so uh, when uh, when a filmmaker is focused on on uh, telling the stories of the past, he is always confronted with the two basic questions from uh, each producer. And the first is, okay, I really like your story, but what will we see? <laughs> How will you visualize it? What will be the, the picture? And please don't tell me that it will be the film of Talking Heads. And maybe the second, as you know, uh, is okay. So you are telling us a story from the past, but why to tell it now? Why to tell it today? Why to tell it now in 2024? And one of the answers on uh, this uh, path of mine uh, was uh, my first film, uh, first feature film, the investigator, uh, it's a story of a guy who uh, worked as a detective for a hack tribunal uh, and he managed to find and arrest a first war criminal uh, from the conflict in former Yugoslavia. Uh, and in this movie he's getting back, getting back to the places getting back to the witnesses he met before, and uh, he finds something unexpected. He finds uh, deep sadness, but also a great anger, great anger on uh, his work, great anger on international justice, and uh, through the film, he is somehow dealing with it. Uh, he realizes that he cannot uh, bring the past back, that he cannot uh, like re revisit his work, and uh, in a film he is, uh, through the, the reenactions, uh, still confronted with uh, the, those basic questions of memory. Uh, this film was... Uh, premiered on FIPADOC 2023, and it was Czech, Croatian, Bosnian co-production. Uh, in these days, we are uh, working on a new project with a working title Between Us. It's again a story from the past. It's a story of a family who decided to hijack a plane in Czechoslovakia in 1970. Uh, but they fucked it up and uh, they left uh, their one-year-old son behind. Uh, they didn't manage to bring him to this new free world and so this son grow, grew, sorry, sorry, this son grew here alone and as he grew also uh, big anger like grew between the, uh, the between the partners and uh, they got divorced they stopped talking to each other and in a movie uh, Ruda which is the name of the son is uh, getting back to them is trying to uh, is trying to uh, find some truth between the people and between the different stories they developed in a time and uh, <laughs> uh, it's uh, trying to find some reconciliation and this film is in, a, in a, an early development and that's it thank you very much thank you thank you victor porter and now anna krivenko will tell us a little bit more about herself Hi, hello. Uh, my name is Anna Krivenko. I'm a visual artist and a documentary filmmaker from Ukraine. I was born and raised in Kiev and also I was studied there as theater directing. 
and uh, after I decided to came to uh, Prague to Czech Republic to continue my studies, uh, but after seven or eight years of doing theater, I understood that I hate theater and I don't want to do it at all. So I was more interested in uh, media art and sound installation. So I decided to continue my never-ending studies at FAMU, at film school, but at Center of Audiovisual Studies that is more like art school in a film school. So I was doing a lot of audiovisual performances, video art, sound installation also. Um, uh, but in 2013, uh, Maidan revolution happened in Ukraine. And at that moment I was in Prague and for me it was really important to also participate somehow. So I started to collect um, a lot of uh, found footage materials that I found in uh, social media and also in official media. And I made my first like, experimental short film uh, silently like a comet. It was mostly uh, exhibited some exhibition project in uh, different countries, in Japan, in Berlin, in New York, in the Czech Republic, of course. Uh, next year, I made a film, uh, Listen to the Horizon. Uh, it was a film about um, how we perceive in, uh, propaganda or propaganda in media. And uh, this film also was um, only from found footage and archival materials. Uh, this film won an um, award for best Czech experimental documentary at Yehlava after it was at Vision Duril and uh, different festivals. And at that moment for me was clear my main topic of interest. It's a media representation of war and suffering. And also this like black holes and shadow zones in our own history that we actually don't really want to speak about. And um, in 2018, I made my first uh, feature documentary, My Unknown Soldier. Um, it was a story of my uh, grand uncle who was accidentally, also he was in Czech Republic, but as a Soviet soldier on a tank during the invasion of uh, Czechoslovakia in 1968. But when he came back home, he committed suicide. And my grandmother just decided to cut him off from all of the family photos. And uh, for me also this film was important, not just because it was, we were, I was speaking about the past, but also it was about me and being foreigner in a different, of, of, as a foreigner in a different country. It was a film about xenophobia and about um, this feeling of guilt and responsibility of something that happened even before you were born. Uh, this film was premiered at Doc Leipzig and also after was at a lot of different uh, festivals. At that moment, everything was looking great for me. I was really happy. I was doing a lot of projects. At one moment, it was like four projects, two feature documentaries, one in Ukraine, one in Czech Republic, one short film, even one. I started to work on a fiction film. But after in 2022, a full-scale invasion of Ukraine happened and I just decided to take a break because I was completely devastated with all of these events and I don't know, at that moment I didn't know and with which project I want to work. Uh, so after one year break, now I'm working on a two projects uh, currently. Uh, one of them, it's a short experimental documentary, The Mirror of the Sea. It's a film about war uh, correspondency through the old uh, 20th century till nowadays. And visually it will be represented by this clash of images of uh, utopian architecture and um, uh, destroying power of uh, nature. Uh, this film will be shot on a 16 millimeter expired film. So also the film will be destroyed in the process of uh, shooting by water and uh, different um, natural uh, aspects. Uh, this film is a collective portrait of people who are, uh, their lives are completely destroyed by war, but they still have this hope that one day they will see each other. Second project is in uh, early development. It's a film, this house is undamaged. It's my, I hope it will be my second feature documentary. Um, this film, it's about like terrible events and terrible um, situation with a reality state in uh, occupied Ukrainian territories, in Mariupol in particular. Uh, because as you know, the, a lot of cities were completely destroyed by Russian army. And uh, at some moment, Russians start to build the new buildings, apartment buildings, and start to sell apartments there. 
and s uh, Russian citizens already living in, in these occupying territories. So this hybrid documentary will use an uh, image deconstruction to show this big reconstruction of a city. And uh, also I will use different uh, media, different found footage materials and advertisement from just uh, ordinary people who are trying to sell or buy apartments in this uh, in this um, in these cities, and actually for some uh, weird reason decide to live in a burial ground. So, if you have some questions, suggestions, uh, some ideas, please speak with me. I will be more than happy. And uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Anna. And we will move to Maria Magdalena Kochova. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to thank Agora, IDF, and Czech Film Center for the opportunity to be here. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Maria Magdalena Kochova, and I'm director from Czech Republic. Um, I graduated from New Media and Visual Arts, and then uh, documentary directing uh, at FAMO in Prague. I participated at many international festivals, such as ITFA Academy, EastDoc Platform, and so on. Uh, and I made uh, several short films, which were screened at uh, many international festivals, I think, such as uh, Karol Vary International Festival, Hot Dogs, or uh, uh, International Festi Film Festival in Rotterdam in Tiger Short Competition. Um, uh, some of these are uh, pure document documentaries, but also uh, fiction, hybrid, or even dance film. I really enjoy to play with the form of the film, uh, to combine different approaches, and um, to create something uh, which match with the, uh, with the story of the film. Um, my work is focused on the people and their stories. Uh, I'm always interested in those who are like a little bit invisible, who's on the margin, uh, who's need to finding and fighting for their place in the world. And also for me it's really important to work with my own experience because I really think that that's something which um, I can convey through the film and create empathy. And that was the way how I choose my topic of my first documentary feature film, um, the other one, which is in the production, uh, post-production. Uh, I am the sister of a child with disability with autism and mental uh, disorder. And a few years ago, I met a girl, 18-year-old Johanna, whose situation was just mirroring what I experienced. We became a close friends, and through her, I want to tell uh, my first feature documentary story, coming of age, and I hope intimate, about the search for freedom and about the responsibility. Responsibility to others, but also to yourself. I would love to introduce you my protagonist, Johanna, and my very, very first documentary feature film. Už se nám to krátí. <laughs> Máte ten důležitý rok, takže myslete už na tu maturitu. <laughs> Pochopte čas na hlazení, čas na hraní, čas na pouštění. Víš, to jsou také základní věci. Blbá, mami, jsi hrozná a dost. To nerozi. To nerozi. Já zlobila, mami, a to je špatně. Spoustu věcí už jsme tak přizpůsobili tomu, že se vyhoví jakoby těm jejím pravidlům, aby se v tom vůbec dalo žít. Hmm. 
Já bych prostě chtěla hlavně jako vypadnout pryč. Asi nejvíc bych chtěla na psychologii. Když si uděláme maturitu, jestli nás přímo. Já mám takový pocit, že my jsme ti na obtíž, že bys nejradši utekla a udělala za náma tlustou čáru. Já to bude taky pozíčku. Prostě každá rodina má svůj osud. Ale já nejsem její rodič, já jsem její sourozenec. Ale jako ráda vás mám a já nevím. Thank you very much for your attention. I would love to meet you after this session and tomorrow's morning. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Magda. <laughs> thank you. And Jana Andert, Jana Andert will tell us a little bit about her. So. Thank you. Um, hello. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you uh, for the opportunity to, to having me here. Uh, my name is Diana Andert and I am a journalist focusing on humanitarian issues and conflict zones. Uh, I would like to tell a little bit of my background, how I start, uh, how I became a filmmaker. Uh, after study of, my, of uh, photography, I started my own company as a photographer, fashion photographer and product photographer for a couple of years. And during this time, I started to study also psychology. And uh, during the study of psychology, I had to have a practice. So I started to work as a social worker with refugees from Syria. Uh, at that time, uh, I, I was listening to their stories, uh, where they're coming from, um, what's, what actually happened to them. And I got very touched by the stories. And I thought, I want to do something about this. So I chose the visual way, the photography way. So I made some preparation, packed my bags, and I traveled to Iraq and photographed Syrian refugees, Kurdish Syrian refugees in the Iraqi camps. When I came back, I had the exhibitions and it was a huge motivation for me to keep on continuing. And um, in one point, after a couple of months, I had the opportunity uh, to um, to join and, and basically uh, photograph a uh, big operation of Kurdish forces against ISIS. And at that point I decided I want to film it. I want to tell it as a story. And uh, after the four days that I have been filming, uh, this was published by CNN. And since that moment, I never stopped filming. And my journey in Iraq continued. Uh, during the battle for Mosul, uh, which took nine months, where the Iraqi army was trying to liberate the city from uh, Islamic State, I was almost for nine months embedded with the special Iraqi forces and filmed their everyday operations. And from this nine months, my first movie was created, first cinema documentary. It is uh, a very Pardon? Yes. It is a very raw uh, documentary which shows the, um, basically the, the real brutality of the war. It's a journalistic approach with uh, following a characters. So there is a, also a deep story of the soldiers. Uh, after that, I continue my journey to Syria, Libya, Somalia, Nagorno-Karabakh and also Ukraine. My next project, Shadows of the Mountains, it's about Armenians from Nagorno-Karabakh. In 2020, I went to Nagorno when the war started, when Azerbaijan attacked the Nagorno-Karabakhian borders, and I went there, and I spent there, spent there the whole war. I filmed the front lines, the injured, the basically, the civilians, what a huge impact had the war on the civilians. At that time, Azerbaijan took a big part of Nagorno-Karabakh and thousands of civilians had to flee. Also, at that time, I met my, uh, one of my main leading characters from my documentary, Diana, a beautiful dancer, talented 
Armenian dancer, basically. And uh, I spent some time with her, filmed her, and it was an incredible experience. After, after the war finished, she stayed there, and I, I went back home, and we stayed in touch. And in, in 2023, a new war started. And during the so-called first one, uh, uh, during the so-called one day war, the Azerbaijan took the rest of the Nagorno-Karabakh and all the Armenians, they had to flee. In the shadow of another conflict, this was not uh, medialized and the people has been forgotten. And at that time I thought I have to make a film about this. I have to talk about these people to not be forgotten. And this film is basically in the, in the development stage. Beside Diana, I'm also following a family which is living on the border with Azerbaijan. Uh, Anushavan and David, they are as soldiers right now, uh, gu guarding the border and b basically facing the Azerbaijanis every day. Uh, throughout my career, I have met thousands of refugees, thousands of displaced people, families. I have filmed them. And we tend to talk about the numbers. We say, uh, sorry, we say thousands of Palestinians has been killed, thousands of Ukrainians has been, has been killed, millions of refugees have fled Syria. We talk about numbers, but for me, those people, they are num not numbers. They are brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers. And throughout my filming, I'm trying to give them the name. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Jana, thank you so much. And last, Pepa. <laughs> Pepa Lubojacki will tell us more. Okay, thank hi. You. Uh, my name is Pepa Lubojacki. I am Prague-based uh, uh, filmmaker. Even though I never really wanted to be a filmmaker, I always wanted to be a writer. And that is why I decided to study script writing, because this was as closest as I could get to writing. So my background is originally in script writing. I studied bachelor before I moved to master's to documentary directing. I have been working on my debut novel uh, for very many years. I wrote, wrote it when I was 17 and then rewrote it or started rewriting it during COVID pandemic. And it is, uh, there is a, I think, start of the journey uh, of my themes, which is addiction, transgenerational trauma, because the book is uh, concentrating uh, on violence in family, in, on addiction, and on unreliability of our memory. It follows Margaret, uh, who is benzodiazepine and alcohol addict, and her father, who is dead, but is very talkative urn, as they uh, return to their hometown to face the past in which uh, her father died and Margaret started to be addict. Um, previously, I made two short films. One is very far from my or this, this topic of addiction. It's called About Hair, and it, is, it follows basically the way how society sees body hair on um, men and on women, on transgender people or non-binary people very differently. On some it's disgusting, on some it's desirable. It is uh, made as a video clip, it is essayistic uh, because I wanted to aim it on teenagers mostly and it was supposed to go to high schools and elementary school but then COVID happened. The second film is How to Get You Underground and it tells a story about my dad who has been dead for 11 years by now, he died due to his addiction. And I tried to say goodbye in this film. And I also explored his character because he was a very violent person. And on the other side, he was childlike. He had a soul of a child who experienced a lot of pain. And it's a lot about, uh, it's a lot about transgenerational trauma too. Uh, I have been also writing a script, uh, which was um, supported by Czech Film Fund. It is a feature film, for, for fiction film script, and it tells a story about an, an unlikely friendship of 85-year-old professor and a non-binary cook from the university kitchen, who is obviously addict. And, uh, I often feel that we disappear from society view as we age, especially as women. And uh, this is the story of people who maybe don't 
or feel that they don't matter, but like through their connection, through their friendship, they can show themselves that they still matter and they still matter to the world. And then there is the film, uh, If Pigeons Turn to Gold, uh, which means a lot to me. It's my first feature debut film. And it follows three years of my life and life of my older brother and my, or our two closest cousins. All of them have been unhoused for over a decade and all of them are um, addicted. I started to think about this film uh, when I met my oldest cousin David in a hospital after both of his legs got amputated due to addiction related health issues. And I started asking the question, why me? Why not, or rather, why them, not me? What is the difference? Why they didn't break the trauma cycle and why I started asking questions of how to break the trauma cycle. And uh, this film is, uh, sorry. Yeah, it's also connected to my father, who is as a urn also one of the characters. And I couldn't save my father, but I decided to try to save my brother and my cousins instead. But the important question for me is, what does it even mean to save someone? And is it even possible without compromising your own mental health? Uh, and I can tell you it's not. But maybe the true respect to, is to accept the person and the way they are and that at that moment where they are at their life just to support them uh, and love them nonetheless without judgment. And sometimes it means to let them die, but you can still be with, still, still be, still be with them. And uh, this film, um, won the, at the pitching at the Yehlava Documentary Festival, won the, 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 the most promising documentary pitching award and will be screened or presented rather at EastDoc platform in Prague and also at CPH Docs in Copenhagen all in, in March. And I would like to show you the beginning of the teaser of Pigeon, if Pigeon Started to Gold, which uh, starts with a voice recording of our mother, mine and my brother, and it only focuses on the re relationship between me and my older uh, brother. So let's play it, please. Oh. No, I'm playing it. Tak teď jsem byla v Albertu, si něco nakoupit. A tam jsem potkala Davida. On mi vůbec samozřejmě neviděl, šel okolo mě, vůbec mě neviděl. Špinavej, ožralej, oči rudý, nevoholenej. Nějakou polivku šel. Nebo... Můžu ti říct, že já prostě musím něco vymyslet, co, co udělat, aby mu člověk pomohl. To je normální, totální troska. Boy. Požeru se, prohraduje v automatu a pak půjdu na ulici krát v palety. Chytá, 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 všechno chytá. Ty ty moje ty fudy, to je vlastně mají kočička. Dobře. To. Že tak a to vůbec nemusou dopadnout, víš co? Děkuji za vás pozornosti. Děkuji za to moc. Pepa, Jana, Marie Magdaléna. Anna and Victor, and also I would like to thank Nadia and Zeynep to doing all preparation and of course Agora to giving us space to be here. So meet us over the drink. And sorry. And don't forget that you can still book meetings. Uh, there are available meetings for tomorrow morning with these wonderful people here at Warehousey. So let's go to the happy hour.